so I'm thinking that I just would like to do some updates for y'all in the yard today. So it's Sunday and we've got a nice breeze here. I'm in Dothan, Alabama, Zone 8B. If you're new to the channel, welcome. So there have been some updates here in the yard since my last video that I'd like to just kind of walk through and talk to y'all about. Here in this driveway bed where the redbud tree is, if you've watched the channel, you'll remember that I had some um, uh, Super Tunia Vistas, silver berries, planted along the border of this bed. And they looked amazing for a little while, but I have removed them and I've laid, in, laid down some mulch in this area. So I'm really happy with it because it really now shows off the plants that I have in this garden. So let's get a good view of these gray out junipers and I have a lot of boxwoods in here and some Lamandra breeze grass and lots of abelia. So this garden is looking good right now. I have added in some perennials, some black eyed Susan, some of this flower, which I really think is so pretty. It is called yellow my darling and the cone is a beautiful green color and it has nice soft little yellow petals and so i finally also found a forever home for my lavender lace crepe myrtle this crepe myrtle has been in three or four different locations since i bought it a couple of years ago i had it at the other house and i brought it over and I never could really find where I wanted it to go. So here it is in this part sun bed off of our driveway. Okay, let's move on to the next, I would say this is kind of a big update. So let's, let's talk about this. Now our home is situated on a golf course here in Dothan, Alabama, and we share a natural area with the golf course. And our property goes about halfway into the natural area and then the golf course property begins. So you may remember that I did a video a while back of the Japanese Maple Garden, which was in this um, kind of a north, northwest portion of the yard and I had planted six or so Japanese maples and I had done a real cottage garden in this area. Well, you know, everything is a process of learning and seeing what works and seeing what doesn't work in our gardens. And that's like, I don't sketch anything out. I don't know exactly what something's gonna look like when I begin a garden bed project. And so at first I really did think that the cottage Thing was was the right idea here but as I took some weeks and uh, sort of studied this area it became apparent to me that I had a lot of plants congested all in this one northwest corner of my garden and what I think would really fit this home better would be to kind of drift plant all the way through this natural area rather than just have a bunch of plants conglomerated all over here and so I have very recently begun to kind of shop this area and pull out some plants that would look really nice in other areas and put them in other areas of the yard now that does not mean that I will not continue to plant in this particular area but I hope y'all can kind of see what, what I'm trying to say. I would like for it to be a more elegant and sort of subtle garden versus having everything just all in this one space, if that makes sense. So let's walk through the back here. A 
Okay. Can we get the can we get the cardboard in to the shot? Because I want to I want to tell y'all what has been the newest issue that has arisen, and that is the weed situation. Because when I came in and I started cultivating all these beds, I got overrun with weeds. And so, per the advice of a lot of people, I've started to lay out uh, cardboard, which will decay and degrade into the soil, and it's actually good for the soil, is what I'm hearing, in order to combat the weeds. And I've started working on this back area. Now, this is a, what is it? A blue, it's a blue wonder spruce, uh, gosh, I can't remember the name. I'll have to put the name up on the screen. Um, but anyway, this is something that I bought online and it has a really great silvery blue foliage. And see this, this really does speak to a kind of cottagey look. So I am gonna have splashes of cottage all throughout the garden. Okay, let's get a shot of the Japanese maple. And this is our little seating area here. And these two teak chairs are from teakcloseouts.com. And they have a wonderful selection of teak chairs and benches. So this is a Viridi, V-I-R-I-D-I-S, Japanese maple. And it is a gorgeous weeping Japanese maple. And I got it at a local nursery. It should get about probably 10 to 12 feet tall and wide. And I just love it. And so as you can see, I've planted some oak leaf hydrangeas and distillium kind of all in the same space. All right, so we're over here in the area that I'm proudest of right now. I've been working really hard in this particular area and i just want to show y'all some of the plants that i've used um, now we've got some oak leaf hydrangeas that are surrounded surrounding this little bird feeder here that the birds love and they'll get about eight feet tall and wide now for example these three obsession nandinas they came from the cottage Japanese maple garden. They were in the very back. They were kind of tucked into a corner of the garden over there where they weren't getting a lot of attention. And so I decided to take these three and put them in this space because I'll be able to enjoy them more here. And I think they look great in this space. This is the Tamukiyama Japanese maple that was in that space and I moved it over here because it's going to be a really nice feathery texture with a backdrop of boxwood and hydrangeas. So my goal for this garden is really to kind of make it a Japanese maple garden with a lot of other plants but this is the perfect lighting situation for Japanese maples and hydrangeas with dappled sun all throughout the day. This is a summer gold Japanese maple tree that I bought from mrmaple.com and okay let's show this boxwood. I got this boxwood at a huge discount and when I bought it, it was taller than me and it had been sitting in a local nursery for I don't know how long, maybe a year or more. And it looked terrible, but I bought it and I chopped it way down a few weeks ago and took out all the dead wood out from inside it. And it's starting to put on really healthy new growth. So can we show them the new growth? So it's just really becoming a, a nice looking boxwood for this little area back here. And the bridal wreath spireas that were in the yard when we moved in here, I think that they are now incorporated into the design 
because when we moved in, they were the only, the, these two, and then those two camellias, the big ones right there, and then there are two more bridal wreaths, Spirea, over there, were the only plants really in this area. And so what I've done is I've added in more plants to kind of try to incorporate the Spirea into the design. And see their blue silver foliage and their wavy foliage really looks nice with all the other plantings. So now we're on the back side of the house and I wanted to show y'all an, some additions that I've made to the bed that, that was in the last video, the transformation bed. So when we moved in, if you remember, there was that huge hedge of hollies that basically spanned the entire back of the house that I took out. And then I added in the hydrangeas, the azaleas, the grasses in, one of the la in the last video. But now I wanna show you some things that I've added in. So I've added in some perennials, some purple cone flowers, some black eyed Susans, some gold mound duranta. Um, and let's see what else. Okay, so the bed came just straight along the back of the house. And so what I did was I just simply dug out a portion of the lawn to give myself a little bit more of a curve. And I moved these three pinky winky hydrangeas from over in that area where they were getting too much sun or too much shade into this area where they're now gonna get a lot of sun. So the pinky winkies are gonna get about six to eight feet tall and wide and they'll take up most of this corner. I've got lots of weeds that I still have to deal with in this bed, but I, otherwise I really like what's happening here right now. So now we're on the south facing side of the house in the full sun bed where I want to show y'all a big development that's taken place. So I had a neighbor come over two days ago, she's a master gardener, and she and I were talking and we were kind of looking at the whole yard and landscape and architecture of the home. And she and I both came to the conclusion that the Carl Fuchs Diodar Cedar, which was here in this corner, was not really speaking to the architecture of the home. It is a gorgeous tree, but this is a very traditional home. And um, so, what I needed to do was add in something that was more structured. And so what I have done is I've opted for this tree. It's called an Eagleston Holly. Eagleston Holly. And it gets about 15 to 25 feet tall. And I think about 15 feet wide or so over the course of years. Um, I believe it grows about six six or so inches a year is what they say. And so I'm liking it in this in this area. And as I looked at that Carl Fuchs Diodar Cedar in this spot, you know, I never felt like it was just 100% right. So all it took was someone to come over here and give me their opinion and bounce ideas back and forth with me uh, for me to realize what I needed in this spot. So I'm really excited about that. And so now I'm gonna show you guys where I've decided to put the Carl Fuchs Diodar Cedar. But let me first show you what all's going on in this bed. So just ignore the weeds, please. So this is a Francis Mason Diodar, uh, Francis Mason Abelia. And I have several of those in here. 
and I also have planted some lantana. Now this lantana in the back right here has just gone bananas. I planted it in a one gallon pot and it has just gone crazy. This area gets full sun all day long. It's super hot. We are in about the 90s right now. And then behind it, I have a pink pinnacle vitex tree. The butterflies, the hummingbirds, the bees, they are all over this garden. They love it. So I've added in some cone flowers in this garden, which I desperately need to deadhead, but these are called sombrero. Let me show you the bloom. I hope y'all will forgive me because I have not finished my weeding and a lot of these plants need to be deadheaded, but I just wanted to give y'all uh, an update today. So this is a white wedding hydrangea. I have three of them planted around this topiary that is here in the sun garden and the blooms are a gorgeous bright white and it is a full sun hydrangea it is called white wedding and it reminds me a lot of the limelight hydrangea except the blooms have a more rounded shape and they are just really bright white as opposed to the limelight hydrangeas kind of limey colored blooms Okay, so now that you've seen what's going on over here in the South Garden, let me show you where I've decided to put the Carl Fuchs Cedar. So I'm giving y'all a reference to where we are in the garden. We're on the west side, the southwest side corner of the property where there are a big stand of hydrangeas that were a beautiful blue and now they're spent, most of them, so I need to chop them down. But the weeds have overgrown this area and so have the blackberry brambles, but I do believe that Carl is gonna look great in this spot and be a nice contrast with the hydrangea in the back. This is a Carl Fuchs Deodar Cedar. For anybody who's interested, this tree was found in Afghanistan and it was cultivated by a man named Carl Fuchs in Germany, hence the name Carl Fuchs Deodar Cedar. It is gorgeous. It is blue, vivid blue needles and it is kind of a weeping specimen and it gets about, I don't know, 10 to 15 feet tall, about seven feet wide. That's what I think. Over the course of years though, it may end up getting a bit bigger than that. And so really by putting it in this spot, I think I'm giving it a little bit more room to spread out. Let me get back and show y'all the full picture. I have plans for this particular area of the garden, but I mean, they are, a little ways out because I have so much to do in this landscape. I feel like I have about 50 projects going on at any given time, if you know what I mean. But it's getting there and it's fun to see the progress. So that's the update for y'all today on this Sunday afternoon. I hope y'all have a good weekend and a good night. And I will make sure to keep you guys posted. I'll try to do a better job of not waiting so long in between videos. But we're still wrapping up with the kitchen remodel. That I'll try to do a better job of not waiting so long in between videos but we're still wrapping up with the kitchen remodel. So there's just been a lot going on over here. Plus, to be honest, 
it's insanely hot here right now so it makes it a little bit more difficult to do videos outside when it is this hot sometimes you just kind of want to get it done and and get out if you know what i mean but things are coming along so thanks y'all and i hope y'all have a good weekend and i will talk to y'all soon